Y'all, we're going to talk about one of Lovecraft's biggest monsters. So in 1927, Lovecraft wrote The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath, one of my favorite stories. Now in this story, he features a creature which he calls a bowl, B-H-O-L-E. Now this was his first story, as far as I can tell, to feature this creature. But The Dream Quest wasn't published till after he died. So it couldn't have influenced people very much. Now, he had a later story, which was published, Through the Gates of the Silver Key. And in this, he talks about bowls again. Now, this story was published, but his editor changed the name of the monster from Bowl to Dole, D-H-O-L-E. It's not at all clear why the editor made this change, because a dole is actually a real animal. It looks like this. It's, I mean, that's not super terrifying. They're about the size of a coyote. Um, now, we can't look into the editor's brain, of course. But uh, anyway, Dream Quest was finally published in 1943. And for some reason, August Derleth, who published it for Arkham House, changed the name of the bowl to Dole. I guess so it matched the published version of the Silver Key. Now... There was another story from 1929 by Frank Belknap Long, Lovecraft's best friend, called The Hounds of Tendalos, and in this, he mentions creatures called doles. Now, Long had probably actually read The Dream Quest, because he and Lovecraft corresponded and visited, and that may be where he got the name Dole or Bowl. So here we have it. Monsters, Lovecraft has monsters in two different stories named Bowls. These creatures got changed to doles by later editors, and Frank Long mentioned doles in his story. Now, the monsters in these three stories seem to be different in a few ways. In the Dream Quest, the bowls are described as burrowing through a vast valley filled with bones. No one ever sees a bowl because they live in complete darkness. However, one brushes past the hero, Randolph Carter, and he feeds a vast, slimy and rubbery bulk pass by, indicating that whatever a bowl is, it's huge. He also indicates that the bowls, while happy to scavenge, also eat live prey. So... The Dream Quest bowl is never seen, but it's big and probably boneless, the rubbery thing, you know? Now, the second time Lovecraft talks about bowls is in Through the Gates of the Silver Key. Now, in this, the bowls are described as burrowing through the planet Yadith, and it says they will eventually destroy that planet. Now, they're slowed down by the technology and magic of the Yadith sorcerers, but in the end, Yadith is doomed. So one Yadithian flees his dying world, he looks out of the starship's portal, and the Lovecraft says you never see a bowl. He sees a bowl, lots of them, he says. And he sees one rear hundreds of feet into the air, then level a bleached, viscous muzzle at him. So this indicates that bowls are probably worm-like? but colossal in scale. How colossal? Well, let's discuss this. Legless creatures, like snakes and some worms, can rear up. So the king cobra can rear up a greater proportion of its body than almost any other snake. A big king cobra can rear up six feet tall and look you in the eye. That's scary. But a cobra that big is about 15 feet long. That means that a king cobra can rear up about 40% of his total length, which is amazing and tells us about the muscle strength of this animal. Now, if we assume that bulls have the same muscle strength as a cobra proportionally, it has to be more because of the square cube law, but you know, bear with me, that a bull that reared up hundreds of feet must be really big. I mean, the minimum number of feet it rears up has to be 200 to be hundreds. That means the minimum size for that bull is 500 feet, and probably it was bigger. This seems to match with the enormous size reported in the Dream Quest. After all, if the bull instead was rearing up to 500 feet, then it had to be over a thousand feet long. You know, you get the idea. To look at it another way, if a bull was proportionally exactly the same shape as an earthworm, then a 500 foot long bull would have a 20 foot diameter as it lay on the ground, or more. Now, in Frank Long's story, The Hounds of Tindalos, you don't see the doles. All that happens is that someone says that the doles might help the hounds of Tindalos to get to him. This seems kind of odd because it kind of indicates that doles have some level of intelligence and magic power, but the bowls from Dream Quest and Yadith don't seem intelligent at all. They're just mindless horrors. Though I suppose anything so much 
so a giant must have some level of intelligence. For example, the Tyrannosaurus has a brain that's about half the size of ours, about the size of a chimp's. Does that mean the T-Rex was as smart as a chimp? Who knows? Anyway, we really don't know how smart a dole is, except that a character in a Frank Belknap long story thought they might be able to help the Hounds of Tyndall as dig it to him. Bear in mind, in the actual story, there's no evidence that the doles did help the Hounds, who seem to have gotten to him on their own. Though there was an earthquake that seemed that hindered his defenses, maybe doles called the earthquake? I don't know. Anyway, you may have, you've probably noticed I'm using the words bowl and dole kind of interchangeably because they sort of refer to the same creature, but there are some other important facts about these creatures that we can bear in mind. First, the bowls from DreamQuest are not in the real world. They are in the dreamlands, and not in the, like, friendly dreamlands, they're in the underworld of the dreamlands. But the bowls from Yadith are in the real world as actual creatures, though they live on a world millions of light years away. Yet again, the bowls or doles from Long Story are able to affect our world, but they kind of seem to be from another dimension? Maybe? They don't, it doesn't seem clear exactly where they're from. So here's the paradox. First, we have colossal worm creatures, at best semi-intelligent. They obviously can't travel through space on their own. They don't have technology or anything. They're too big for a ship to carry them, though I suppose a really big interdimensional gate might let one through. We also learn these creatures are both in the dreamlands and the real universe. This is unusual among Lovecraft creatures. As far as we know, only humans, cats, and ghouls go back and forth between the realms. Moonbeast, night gaunts, gugs, zoogs, gas, bulls, they're only seen in the dreamlands in the story, except that bulls are also on Yadith. But there's other clues. From the Yadith tale, we know that doles destroy their planet. And this is kind of a bad life cycle for a creature to have. I mean, if you destroy your world, then where do you live? That's where you keep all your stuff, right? But there's parallels. You see, this is a similar life cycle to the brown recluse spider. Here is how the brown, it's, the brown recluse spider's life cycle is based on a boom or bust thing. Most spiders try to live in an ambiance in the community, not brown recluses. Here's how it works. A brown recluse moves into like a shed or a cave or un, un, under a bridge. Usually sheds are where they live now, right? And they start to breed. As they breed, they get more and more numerous. And they're really aggressive. They will go into a wasp nest and bite the wasp in the head and drag it out. I mean, they're, they're fierce. OK, so they get more and more and more. And then eventually they have destroyed everything, every other arthropod or creature in that shed. And then they start feeding on each other. And then some of them try to flee and eventually they go away. And then there's like almost no brown recluses left. Oops, I might have hit my microphone there. Hope you can hear that. Almost no brown recluses left. And the cycle can begin again or start somewhere else. Now, you, now if you go into your shed and it's kind of quiet, there's no insect noises or buzzing, and there's little cottony webs here and there, not a full web, just a little trace of it, that is probably because you have brown recluses and, like, don't pick up any boxes. So the brown recluse life cycle is based actually on booming and then going extinct. What if the bowl is doing something similar? So it does destroy planets, but somehow... Some bulls, at least, are able to get to a new one and infest it. But how if it can't travel in space? What's the solution? Well, I've come up with a very logical solution that lets us use both the words bowl and dole in different contexts and explains the confusion between them and explains Frank Belknap Long's story where the doles help the hounds. Here's the idea. My concept, which fits all the facts, though it is my speculation, is that bulls are actually the larvae of doles. In other words, doles don't spawn their young on the planets they're on. They spawn them into the dreamlands, not the real universe. These young are properly called bowls. There, in the Vale of Panath or other places like that, I guess, they're safe in darkness. They burrow away and they grow larger and larger till they kind of get too big for the veil or they turn into whatever bowls do. Then, they plummet through the dimensions to a world in at least our universe, maybe others. Now, it's it's likely they're attracted primarily to words, worlds where there's already a population of doles. But they probably have a way to occasionally land on new worlds. And when they do that, that planet's in trouble. 
Thus, my idea here is that the word bowl is properly used for the Dreamland's larval creatures, and the word dole is correct for the adult form in the real universe. But for simplicity, people could add either or both bowls or doles. For instance, the word chicken was originally coined to refer to baby hens and roosters, but now we call adults chickens too. We still know what a hen is, though. Now, this also explains how these semi-mindless monsters can help the hounds of Tindalos. You see, the hounds in Long Story are trying to dig through eons of time and space to get to their prey. Well, if every time a dole spawns a bowl, or a bowl matures and returns to our dimension, a dimensional gate is opened, at least for a little while. My assumption is that the hounds, who can move through time and space, will find one of these temporary dole or bowl holes... (laughs) See what I did there? And use it for easier access to us. So they do help them, even if inadvertently. Now, in my games, I've produced figures of both bowls and doles, and you can buy them from Miniature Market right now. They're in stock as I say this. You can probably find them other places too, but, you know, I know Miniature Market has them. Thus, I managed to include all the known facts about doles and bowls. At last I can rest. At least until the day when a dole lands on our world. And the earthquake start. You're like a little crashing, crazy crackpot theorist looking into like the tiniest little details and turning them into facts. You are absolutely 100% correct. (laughs) 